the much anticipated ruling from uh, the, the case that is before the High Court Judge Musa Sekana is going to be delivered today, and we know that today uh, this case uh, stems from the 14th July 2020 uh, activities that happened at Kachiri Gardens Hotel there in Wakiso when the National Unity Reconciliation and Development Party changed, changed its name and turned into National Unity Platform. But this is being contested before the courts of law, and the ruling will be coming by email this morning. Let me speak to the council who has been in so central in this case. What is your expectation from today's ruling? Uh, thank you, uh, viewers and TV. Um, my name is Wameli Anthony, Wameli and Company Advocates. I'm also the, the head of the legal department in the National Unity Platform and a person who has been in this matter. What we anticipate today, of course, as a National Unity Platform and as lawyers for the party, we would hope to win this matter so that we put this behind us and continue with our campaigns because this is an election period and uh, people are getting ready to, to contest. Uh, we, the, we have candidates now over 400 of them, so we would expect that the court finds that NUP is legally constituted, is, is the leadership is, is lawful and in the right position and whatever they've been doing uh, from the time they assumed office is, is lawful. That's what we anticipate and that's what we hope for. But you know this case is putting uh, many can those candidates on tenterhooks because they know their future, their political program mm. is based on this ruling. Mm. Uh, what would you tell them? Because it could go either way, in your favor or against you. One, I would tell them to relax. I would tell them to relax. There's no need for, for panic because I do not see any way they will be stopped from continuing as candidates and actually going into the election. That is point number one. And then number two, I do not see any reason why the judge would undo what, what NUP has already done, especially when if you follow the principle or the doctrine that we call uh, progressive overruling, that sometimes something could have been illegal or unlawful, but because a lot of water has gone under the bridge, the judge can as well say, let whatever has gone under the bridge pass and let's beginning now change. So I'll let them know that they need to relax. At worst, they could probably become independents, but they cannot lose their candidature or the, the contentions are in as members of parliament or other candidates for other positions. Let's speak uh, ex exactly talking about you losing the case. Mm. Uh, you as a lawyer, and you as NUP. What would this mean for the political activities of the party? Because now you have your symbols and mm. you have a roadmap already. But when the court says that this exists, the NUP exists in, as an illegality, it's null and void, mm. what will happen to the programs? First of all, the, 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 the case is two pronged. One, mm. the, the, the applicant sought the, a declaration of court that the name was changed illegally, so the name reverts. Now that the party doesn't die, the party doesn't go away. The party remains, but the name goes back to NURP, National Unity Reconciliation and Development Party, not NUP. That is point number one. means nothing, a lot changes. Then number two, yes, the, number, the symbol remains. There is no problem with the symbol. The party remains. The other issue is about the leadership. They would want court to say that the leadership was illegally constituted. So they want the court to stop the electoral commission from engaging or working with NUP and its leadership now. And like we have said, first of all, they wanted to inject the electoral commission by then to stop them from, for example, nominating candidates. Now the electoral commission has already nominated candidates. So that part of their prayer is overtaken by events. So the subsequent part probably is what you can now ponder upon. If I have been already nominated under the umbrella of NUP, can the judge undo that? especially to the whole world, because now it's not about the leadership of Chagulani and the committee of NUP, but it's about the whole world. Over 400 MPs that have been nominated as candidates, over so many councillors, chairpersons, mayors of, of divisions and, and town councils. So you realize that probably a big part of this judgment ought to have been overtaken, of this case ought to have been overtaken by events. So I don't see any judge ruling otherwise, unless okay. something is going to be illegal. Let me speak to you as a politician who is under NUP, now yes. as a lawyer. Mm. Uh, now, Robert Chagulani is not yet nominated, because yes. he will be nominated on 3rd November. Mm. But what will happen to his candidature? Will he also go as an independent or as a candidate, just in case you lose? Mm. Will he go as a candidate of NRI, NURP or uh, an independent candidate? 
Well, like I have said, that those are the questions that I, I believe should have gone through the mind of the judge because in a few minutes we expect a ruling on my email. But if uh, the judge should have asked himself what happens to Chagulani, for example, because he, if NUP is legally existing, like the Electoral Commission says, the issue is probably with the name and the leadership. It has members. Could probably NUP could think of, of uh, finding a, a flag bearer within this period because nominations are third and fourth, mm. still they could find a flag bearer still in Chagulan because the members of the party have to choose mm. a, another flag bearer. That is the other way, like you have said, in case the ruling goes the other way. Mm. Then, of course, the other option that one would not want probably to think about but has to think about is the, the fact that he can still be nominated as an independent. But like I've said, he is a member of NUP. He has already be, his membership is not being challenged. It's his leadership in NUP that is being challenged. And as a party, NUP will want to have a presidential candidate and is up for that position. I do not see anyone who will come up and contest and win him in that particular position. So probably the party can still have a process of finding a flag bearer for presidential candidate, even when the judgment says the leadership is not duly constituted. Okay, let me understand this legally. Uh, when people sign the signatures endorsing the candidate of uh, Robert Chagulani, uh, do they sign it as uh, in the name of Chagulani or as a candidate of, for, uh, an aspirant for NUP? What does that say? What does that mean legally? Well, legally it means that the people endorse the person because you know, with the electoral commission and with the presidency, it's an individual. It is only that after finding that individual, you ask them whether they are being supported by a, part, a party or they are coming as independents. So the signatures cannot be to NUP. The signatures are to Chagulani Center Robert as a contestant, and then the party supports him or promotes him. Uh, reading, what do you as uh, NUP uh, top leaders, because we are part of the cream, the cream of NUP, you mm. sit on their council, legal council of mm. NUP. Uh, what does this, all this case and all the happenings, because you've, you've seen a raid here at Kamoch uh, NUP headquarters, we know there are cases that are uh, uh, in uh, the, the NUP. What do, you, what do you read in this as we go uh, towards 2021 in elections? What I read is NUP is here. NUP is here. NUP cannot be wished away. NUP is a force to reckon with, and the, the, the junta is doing everything they can what do you mean by to junta? fail the, the regime. The regime, because NUP is largely backed by the forces of change, because people are looking for change. And like I've said, this is the time for everyone to know that the regime, as established as of now, does not want to see anyone that comes to challenge the status quo. And yet everyone, all and Sandra are saying, we need to establish, to, to change the established status quo. So for me, what I read from this is that we are strong, we are growing stronger. They, they are hitting us below the belt, legally and otherwise, but it, it makes us stronger, it makes us more composed and know that this is the actual place that we have to be. Council Anthony Wameri, mm. looking at this case, I've been talking to you as uh, just in case you lose this case, but mm. if you win this case, mm. are you going to seek uh, compensation from uh, the petitioners of this case? Well, for me, I, I, I want to believe that these petitioners also need change, need to be liberated like uh, one of the respondents who now turned around and became like a petitioner, Mr. Chibalama was crying to court that he needs to be redeemed. I think we need to redeem them. We need to secure their liberties. They're not free. I don't think they're doing this on their own free will. So we don't see any, anywhere where NUP as, in the, as a party or Chagulanya and the other party members as individuals that were sued pursuing them because it's not worth it. It's not worth it. We need to, to bring everyone on board, including them, to show them that this is a change that we need and you should not be used by anyone to, to block or to stop this change that is imminent. During the court process, uh, court process, we saw the security, in fact, the name of the CDF being brought into uh, mm. this case. But, he, of course, the press conference was also held, mm. and they say that you just approach them seeking for security. Moses mm. uh, uh, mm. uh, Do you think the, the, the security or the military is really engaging in this uh, court case? Court case as, it, as a court case and the legal and the political process that they're in? Yes, definitely they are. Definitely they are because if, and I, and I think it even goes to, to whether we really have security like people would understand it legally because under the law, especially the laws of Uganda, one would expect someone to run to the IGP for, as a place of first call or the police if they really needed security as they claim. But then number two, why, what would the 
why would the, the CDF hold on to someone and just deliver him to court as a, as a witness? Because our understanding is from the moment they met, Mr. Chibama was never a free man. We couldn't even interact with him. Yet he's a member of our party, not only a member, but a representative at the Electoral Commission. So I think that is interference, which is not necessary. Very finally, uh, this, uh, is, do you think this is putting the court on uh, a test? Because this is not the first case uh, involving the, court, the judicature mm. and the political parties. Well, I would say the court has been tested many times. This is another time where, where they, I really sympathize with the judge. Because sometimes if you see those overbearing antidotes, you realize that probably this is not the place where, but this is a time for them to stand up and say, we have to rule according to the law and not according to who is pushing us. Thank you so much, Anthony Wameri, Council for National Unity Platform, and he's from Wameri and Campana Advocates. Stephen Ibide on Pepe's which we have been having a conversation with him here at the NUP headquarters in, in Kamocha. Back to you in the studios. Thank you very much. He's giving us an update on the Nkonge Chibalama case versus Robert Chagulanyi. Well, I was perusing through some of your responses with regards to our riddle for the day. We did ask what can travel around the world while staying in a corner. And uh, I do have some of your responses right here on our Facebook page. You can also go there and leave your answer to the riddle. We shall be taking a look at those as we proceed. Uh, Lawrence in Nakata, Kawokoza, he's saying we need Museveni's academic papers. That is not the answer. Frank Binman is saying a stamp. Cynthia Ruby is saying, ask Google a moment, please. Wrong. Jackie Sempijer is saying someone's thoughts. Uh, Miranda Nyeko is saying a suitcase. Mutabani Wahajat is saying someone's thoughts. The mind. Uh, Chibango Steven is saying the thoughts. And uh, Ronnie Mugere is saying the postage stamp. Alan Aini is saying a wave. Uh, Nyakato Juliani is saying the sun. But the answer to, th to that question, we can travel around the world while staying in a corner, it is a stamp. The answer is a stamp. And to all the boys and girls, kings and queens, young women and men who are celebrating their birthdays on this particular day please do enjoy very carefully and cognizant of the fact that we are dealing with a global pandemic that has wreaked havoc on Uganda which is grappling with 10,788 cases. Good morning.